increase in numbers, um, as you would, some of you would have known, is that the government subsidized our, our feeding program. But the increase in numbers means then that whatever the government give us, we have to subsidize it. This is subsidized to our thrift store. The clothes that is donated to us, we put them in the thrift store. And the money from those clothes, you come and get a suit of clothes, pants, a shirt, and it costs no more than $7, $8, um, maybe less. Um, depends on the quality of the clothes, some may be a dollar, depends on what. That money is used then in our feeding program to help subsidize the shortfall that we may have. So the clothes that are given, all are not given away. Some are used in our thrift store to make some funds so that we can buy food for the feeding program, um, gas for the vehicle to take the food out on the road and to pay the persons who work on the cooks and so in that program. Yeah. So, but now you have a challenge. Yes. <laughs> yes, now we have a challenge. Um, last year around this time, we had no clothes again. And the public of Barbados was very good to us. They were very good to us in that by December, we had a whole set of clothes. But then with the shutdown in January and February and so, we encountered that the clothes weren't coming as fast as we were sorting them and, and putting them on to the thrift store and also giving them away. We have, during that, we also had the Hurricane Elsa. We had the Ashfall. We had persons who were fire victims. So not only do we take clothes, we take furniture. So people came for beds. We had to get, we gave them the beds. Um, Sometimes if, we, if a person come and they see a bed and they want to pay for it, we can allow them to pay for it. I have a friend who, a, a person who frequents the fish store who said to me recently that this is where she bought her furniture for her house and she could not afford to buy, go into the furniture stores to buy a new brand, say, stove. But the stove that she has, someone donated to us, she pay $100 for that stove. And if you see the stove now, you think it's a new stove. She went to one of the furniture stores and buy. So it, it is. It, the reality is that it helps each program helps the feeding center financially. At this time of the year, you'll be getting ready for the Christmas drive. Yes. Give me an idea of how that went well, last year, and yes. what are you thinking about this year as it relates to doing it again? Okay. Last year, Christmas drive was excellent. The Barbados public, for the first time, we were able to actually meet our target of 700000 We were able to raise $746,000. And that, as you know, that is not just used at Christmas. That's spread out the whole year. And by now, we would have done our mid-year appeal. That is going, okay, people don't, if we have found that Barbados don't really give during the mid-year. The more give, the back to school and Christmas. And we found that this year, the funds were able to stretch at least till now. Um, with the clothing coming in, once we're able to get clothing, even business places who call us, like Mr. Abel calls us and tell us, we have some stuff that you can get, come and get them. And we, we go and get them and we're able to put them in the store. Uh, we had a business last week call us to the warehouse and said, take what you want. And we took and we were able to use that last week to supplement not having any clothes. So that will just tell you the kind of relationship we also have with corporate Barbados, who has been very fundamental in helping us over the years to keep reaching out to persons. Some of them reach out to persons in different ways. Some persons, some foundations and trusts and, and corporate Barbados don't want to, their names to be out there. They just want to be behind the scenes working. And we do appreciate that they use us sometimes as their agencies to, to reach out to others. Give me an idea of whether the Salvation Army have noticed, um, trying to put this delicately, different types of people coming for help in yes. the last 18 months. And, and what have you noticed? Well, when we were doing the ongoing food boxes with the Rotary, we had a cross-section of persons who came to us. And one of the experiences was that we saw a lady who came originally to, to um, say she needed help in the initial lockdown. And she said she never thought she would have had to come to Salvation Army at any, at any occasion. 
and she came and she had a food box and she was on a rotation of every two weeks coming and getting a food box. If you saw the vehicle she drive, you would see the caliber of person she was. When she went back up to work, she came and she said, don't put my name on the list no more, give it to somebody else who has not been getting it. And when Christmas came, she had a job and she came and she said, this is for helping me when I had nothing and she gave a donation. So that just tell you the caliber of people that we help and we assist all across the board for the last 18 months. Because COVID has no respect of persons, it has hit persons really hard. And some persons have from in the hotel industry, they have not gone back to work. Um, managers have not gone back to work. And they're trying to do a business, start a business. And we are, you know, if they come and say we need some, I need something for my children to eat. We have a pantry program where we would put the food parcel together and give it to them. And my final question, if you were to give me a dollars and cents breakdown of <laughs> how much is salvation it takes to run your day-to-day -day operations, feeding and all those kind of things, either daily or weekly, what does that look like? Mm. How much do you need in order to keep the Salvation Army running? Well, right, right now for, for a financial year we need at least between the feeding program and the pantry program we need at least say probably a million dollars to, to keep everything going. Noting that, yes, some of that is, is supplied by the government. Um, noting that our Christmas program puts in another 700,000. So the shortfall will be about roughly 100,000, 150,000. So there's not that we need a million, but a million is the overall cost. But at the end of the day, we have two areas where we think. One concern we have is that with the way COVID is, if we are not able to do our red kettle appeal for Christmas, it will hurt us really hard. And, and if the country is going to lock down and we're not able to get up there to ring the bell and to get our appeal going, then those two months of November, December, where we raised all of, majority of our money, I should say, is going to be very difficult for the salvation.